Hey guys, hey, I'm Ryan Charnock. I'm uh, the collaboration Office 365 lead for Red Level, and um, they asked like, how did you get all of your favorite people onto this uh, into the the panel here? I go, well, um, I was the only one on that showed up for that meeting today, so I got my people in. <laughs> <laughs> Went by default, so I'm super happy to say those are my my good friends and clients that I got a chance to work with. So um, this is me. I'm I'm Ryan Charnock. I work. This has been my space. I've been working in for the last. I don't know, 20 years it feels like for my professional career. Once upon a time, I was an instructor for New Horizons. So I did a lot of technical work in the SharePoint space for SharePoint 2007. Um, then I got out of that, went to be in Chrysler's IT environment and led the user adoption of SharePoint within about 20,000 people within Chrysler, one of the largest SharePoint implementations in the world, over 200 servers in their environment there. And, and I got a chance to join a consulting firm with CDH and Red Level. And now everybody's my, my client, okay? So I live down river and these are my kids. They're awesome. I get a chance to brag. And my ballet dancer, I get to be in the ballet with her every year. So that's really cool. So awesome. All right, there's a clicker here. Moving on. All right, so what? I'm gonna go through just some, some basic ideas about what teamwork really begins to solve. And then I'm gonna show with you guys about three different use cases or case studies where we've implemented teamwork or we're designing a teamwork implementation that kind of echo one of those problems they're trying to solve. So these are the common problems that everybody has that it's hard to find things. How many would agree? It's hard to find content. Yeah, it is. It's a common problem and people are wasting time. They're not getting, they're finding, they're spending time finding data and actually set, instead of doing something that's the title on their business card. So we believe if I give you more time for whatever your title is, let's say it's the director of HR, you can do more directing of HR things instead of hunting down a document, right? So that's, that's kind of a problem we've been trying to solve for the last 25 years. Another problem of this is, here we go, is the, that's the number of average emails you get a day, 122. How many guys are above? Anybody below? You're amazing. I want your life. <laughs> that's because of Gene. Oh, look at that. It's 50 bucks. <laughs> so the idea is that email is awesome. It's very strong and it's well used and well loved. And if and, and when you're in like a survival situation, you go with what you know and what you have certainty with. So how many guys are, feel like your every day is in survival mode? So we go with what we know and we have certainty with. So which means we're not innovating. We're not thinking about what is the best tool. We just go with the tool we know works, which we know is email for collaboration, for an all company email, for news posts, for that kind of things. So this is what a lot of our transformation engagements look like is like, hey, let's just stop. Let's think about this. Maybe there's a better tool to use for that particular scenario. So that's a problem everybody has. Next problem, okay, is employee turnover. Okay, you have somebody, um, and, and Rebecca mentioned it, a lot of these organizations, their branding is so good, their culture is so awesome, nobody leaves, okay? <laughs> it's true. There's a, you're kind of an enemy of your own success. And so the problem is, is that these folks will eventually leave and it's going to cost you a lot of money to replace them. And my thinking is that it does cost money for like recruiters and actually finding good talent to help out there. But also the person that's been there the longest, the more the relational network grows and the more responsibility they have. And they also kind of have this intrinsic knowledge as well. If, if you need something shipped and the, the shipper application is down, well, dude, you just walk down to the docks and you talk to Jim and you give him a little handwritten note. He'll get a ship for you. Where is that written down? It's not, but they've been here so long, they know that. So when you when you find a replacement, you gotta hire two people, not one. That's a problem, okay? The next thing is, what is the best way to collaborate? Okay, if you look at this scene from Forrest Gump, what is he trying to do here? He's convincing them to take a, a piece of chocolate. Good, come on, you guys all know this movie, right? Okay, so, so, so let's say we try to do that. Same scenario, says he's, he's, he's very odd. He's kind of an odd person. He's trying to get, get people, complete strangers on a bus stop to participate and collaborate in his story and partake of a little snack. Okay, does this sound like real world? It's a metaphor, but it's applying, isn't it? Okay, so then, okay, so then he's doing it in person, which I think is the best way. But maybe second best would maybe we could use some kind of chat feature. Let's say you can't get in person, right? And our, this is our business world, isn't it? Is that First person, in-person contact is the best way to communicate and collaborate. But if I can't get in front of you, then maybe the next thing I could do is at least get some kind of two-way, high-velocity type of chat. Then the worst way I would say would be that. Sending emails. 
right? It has a, a long duration, has to wait for it to come, wait for it to send. And you'll notice it's the matter of volume, it's the frequency, like how fast can we communicate, <laughs> right? And you ever, ever notice that when you're in a meeting, you pick up on all these nonverbal cues from people? Like you're sending, you're communicating to me right now, all your nonverbal cues. And I'm giving you the same. We're, we're communicating. But if I can't see you, I have to ask and say, do you understand? And then you have to go, what did he just say? And then you have to decide what's the appropriate response to my question in audio scenario. You're like, yes, Ryan, I understand. Right? It, it, there is, that is all these cycles that now just slow down our communication. But if you really just need to do it in person, you just go, hmm? yep. You don't have to say anything, you nod. There's all these cues that are much faster. So when it comes to the best way to communicate, that's a problem is that we have people that are in remote locations. I can't do face-to-face. -face, so now how do I do these other things? And this is where Microsoft Teams is really starting to come into play. Oh yeah, this is kind of funny too. Nice little joke here, right? This is us, IT, we're the odd guy. <laughs> you should use this stuff. All right. The other problem I find is this problem I call the problem of proximity. The problem of proximity is this. Let's say this is the house that you bought and you're going to renovate it, but you keep all of your tools in this garage over there. So you go to work on the kitchen and the plumbing and you realize, oh, I need a wrench. So you walk out to the front door, you walk out to the garage, you grab a wrench, you come back, you start working like, oh, I need another tool. I need a screwdriver. So you walk out the front door and you go back there. How many trips does it take before you grab the whole toolbox? Right? We're smart people, we'll just move the toolbox in. So that's the problem, is this proximity. When something feels far away, we just take what's far away and we make our own local storage of it. Let's now change the metaphor. This is SharePoint. This is your network drive. This is your public document storage. This is the official place where you store all of your tools. How many times, how many, how many people take the documents from there and store them locally on their own PCs and desktops? Which then goes to the first problem, a search problem. Because now you need to find that document. It's now actually located in two different locations, in two different versionings, and on three different desktops. See how that works? This is actually a problem we have not been able to solve for uh, in my career. I used to spend year, like lots of energy getting people, hey, go out to SharePoint, put all your documents there, work with the live document. It's on this, look, just leave your desktop. It's going to be OK. <laughs> We'll come back. Look, it's still there. <laughs> okay, right? And we sneak them out to a browser, put them in some fancy URL. Like, look, it's your portal. We think those words are like magic and they'll give them safety. No, they like still want to go back to their desktop. So it's still, SharePoint was awesome, but it still felt far away in a web context. Where this is where Microsoft Teams then says, dude, let's become a, a desktop app. Let's put it right where people live. Let's bring their files for their departments. Let's bring chat right to them. Let's bring their phone right to them. Let's bring everything sent far away. Let's bring it right to them. So they can be good with do solving whatever their business problem is and not have to worry about, hey, where are things located at? So that's, that's a major problem, concern. Okay, so with all those concerns, let's get to our first case study, okay? So the case study I have here is, is an organization where they had they had classic team sites, okay? And this is for actually a local um, museum here in the area. So they had a SharePoint deployment and they had lots of team sites. And the way they had team sites, they had a team site for every exhibit, which is you think of like a project. It's like a, a year, year and a half long project when they develop a new exhibit for the thing to roll it out to the museum. So in that team site, they had everything from a splash page, a series of folders that are institutionalized, all the documents that they needed. They put a lot of stuff in there. And I go, that's awesome. How's it working? They go, it's amazing. We love it. But I go, well, who am I, who, who loves it? Well, it's the people who created the team site. They're the ones who love it. Not necessarily everybody else has to consume it because they deal with the problem of proximity. Like, where is this exhibit data? It's not on an intranet. It's like in this other little space. It's an exhibit site that's kind of connected to it. And you have to go out to the intranet, find some link, know the name of it. Then you find the site and there it is. And the documents are out there and they're actually, all of them are being replicated on the people's local drives. They're making draft copies then updating previous ones. They're kind of doing collaboration. I would say they have a reasonable level of collaboration, but it still feels far away, okay? And does this kind of sound familiar? 
if they need to make a change, they do a file download, they update it, and then they re-upload it. Does that make sense? That process. And then if they need to communicate, they just send things via email still. So those problems are still facing them. Those were really the issues they're facing. I said, okay, how about, is there a way we can take these classic team sites and bolt them and bring them really close into Microsoft Teams? That was the question. That was the kind of the goal. So, hey, can we do that? Can we take this thing and bring it to Microsoft Teams? So here's how you can do it. So Microsoft, I did a little research and said, hey, here's a three-step process you can do this. Okay, step one, you can take your existing SharePoint classic team site. Okay, I'm getting a little technical on you guys. Okay, you hang with me. Okay, and you, and then you can actually create it into what's called, turn it into a Microsoft group. Okay, and then a Microsoft group. Okay, then you can, step two is you can take that group and you can teamify it. Everybody say teamify. teamify. Impress your teenagers, it'd be a great word. <laughs> okay, so then you teamify it. Okay, which then you gives it a Teams interface and then you're able to move files, move the files from whatever they're at, their locations, and put them into the actual Teams channels, okay? And now, all those things were very far away. They're now being surfaced right live on their desktop. That's cool. That's way cool. Now, the way you can do this is that each site owner can do a DIY. They can take their own individual site collection, and then they can go, boom, I want to do it. Bam, 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 go through the steps themselves, okay? But if you want to do it in bulk or wholesale, Microsoft does offer a little scan tool. I got it here on the slide. These will be available to you. You'll get the references later. You can also Google. That's really helpful too. Okay. There's a scan tool that allows you to allows you to scan your entire environment, give your report. Here's your classic team sites. Convert these guys. And you can go through this conversion process also through some PowerShell. All righty. So that's the process. You want to see it? Let's do a demo. Come on. I think that's the next slide. Yes, it is. All right, let's switch. There we go. All right, you guys ready? Okay, here we go. So I have a classic team site. Minimize, let's minimize that guy. And here we go. So let's go find it first. All right, so classic team sites, they do not show up under active sites. These are sites that you see here. Ooh, not, these are all the guys that are out there, okay? So we need to have a classic team site. So I gotta go to even, it's, they've really buried this now. Records management, BCS, apps, term store. Why is this so hard to find? Here we go, classic team site page. And I'm not used to mousing with one hand. You know how many guys are keyboard and mouse people? There we go. All right, if you're not sure what a classic team set is, you remember now? Okay, so what you have here is a basic just SharePoint 2013 kind of looking site, 2016 looks pretty similar. Okay, but what we really wanna do is we wanna now connect this to Microsoft Teams. And so this is exhibit 11C, 11C. I just came up with some generic number, okay? And I really wanna have this thing listed so that when I get to Teams, okay, here's my Teams. When I get to Teams, I wanna have it listed in this Teams space so I can use the exact same documents in a nice close local kind of context. So I can chat about the documents. We can hold meetings about the documents. We can see all the context back and forth. So mechanically, here's how you do it. Step one is I'm gonna do the DIY method, okay? You go to the site itself, and this is if I'm the user. It's got this great little item that says connect to an Office 365 group. I'm gonna say, yeah, let's do that. And this is kind of like follow the bouncing wizard kind of thing, just follow along. It says, are you sure? Yeah, wow, this is amazing. Let's, it's exciting. Let's go build this thing. So exhibit this, this is its address. I'll say, hey, great, let's connect this to a group. It gives me an opportunity to add additional members. I'll say, no, I'm good for now. Say finish. Awesome. And I instantly get, the site gets converted from a classic view to what they have, what they call modern. 
Okay. You know, so we've seen the modern news web part that's here. We're seeing the quick links are modernized, the documents, and this, this is the same set of documents that I had. It basically just get a conversion from classic SharePoint team site to a modern. Yay, that's amazing. Okay, but it's only at this point, it's only a Microsoft group. Anybody use groups before? And and I would I would guess you've used groups because you started using them before Teams was released. Okay, at this point in the game, most people aren't outright using groups explicitly because they chose so, okay? And the reason why is because groups, they actually show up in Outlook and they have their own set of interface and it's not as high velocity of a pace of things, okay? So, but groups are kind of like a backend thing that teams actually have to be a part of and use. So let's do this. So if I were to go, we want to turn this thing, we want to turn this thing, this Exhibit 11C into a group actually into a team. So if I go into Microsoft Teams, I go to create or join a team. And there's, this is the final step. I'm gonna say, hey, let's go create a team. And this I can say build from scratch or I can create from an existing group. It's kind of like you have to have one, it's a little, a group is the middle step in between these two things. I wanna have it from an existing Office 365 group. It says, oh, look at that, there it is, that guy. It's gonna now create the team, it's showing up, right here in my Teams environment, that's amazing. But if I go to General and I go to Files, it's still setting it up, it's gonna say, hey, where are these files? Okay, where are these files? Now, does anybody know the difference? Where does, where does Microsoft Teams store all of the files? In SharePoint, more specifically, give me, give me some more details. What library? Documents, and then every channel is then what? its own folder inside of it. So the final step here is to take people's documents that were in maybe natural SharePoint libraries and then move them into channel folders so they then surface automatically in this Teams environment. So let's go, so let's go through the process here. Let's make a quick little channel. Add a channel. We'll call this uh, C1 for channel one because I'm really, I'm only typing with one hand. Okay, so C1 looks great, awesome. Okay, great, no files in it. But if we go out to the exhibit site, we go to documents, we're not gonna see evidence of the teamification. We've now teamified this. There's the general channel and there's the C1. So now the objective, I wanna surface these guys inside Microsoft Teams. Hold on. Let's move these guys. I'm just gonna move them into that channel. Current library. C1, let's move them there. So it's gonna go through this little chunking process. It's gonna pick them all up. It's gonna put them into that particular folder. But by doing that, it's like mystery little portals, like the little wardrobe in Narnia. It now ports them into this magical kingdom of teams where everything is amazing and you get Turkish delight every day. Oh, that's the bad guy, isn't it? Okay, bad, <laughs> bad, I did that story wrong, didn't I? <laughs> okay, so the documents are there. Let's go see if they actually show up. So if I go back over to teams, we go to, uh, I'll just refresh the page. How about that? Refresh the page. Hey, look at that. There's the document. So I'm going to say dismiss this guy. So there you have it. That's the end of my demo. So the first, the first problem that we came with this client is they had all this existing infrastructure, existing kind of SharePoint environment with all these classic team sites. And you can do a couple of things with them. You can just abandon them and rebuild kind of a greenfield in teams, right? Departmental sites, the project sites, cross-functional things, or you can actually convert them, okay? And so this was a great little use case. We found this process of going through it, thank you, going through of just connecting the, connecting the SharePoint team site to an Office 365 group, then you create a team, you join that to a team, and then you just move thing, move files into some channels, and voila, pretty painless process of doing that. Great. Does anybody have a, have a good question? So what happens if you have um, you have random on a file folder? Like I'm so glad you asked, because that's our next okay. scenario. <laughs> Got it. So the next case study we found was, oh, Teams is awesome. Like, yes, Teams is awesome. But Ryan, we have mixed permission scenarios, right? How many guys have mixed permission scenarios? Okay, awesome. Okay, well, number one, cut it out. That's your first solution. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, the second solution you can do is you say, well, this is my standard answer, is to say, well, then have a team for every unique set of users. Keeps easy. Because at a team level, you can control, it's five people can have access to this team, and, and four people can have access to this different team, and 10 people can have this to this team. Okay, that, that's, that's nice, but that's not, that's pretty big. Those are big objects. Microsoft has not released, but it's on their roadmap, okay, to then have permissions at a channel level. We're kind of waiting. We're kind of waiting for that, all right? We're waiting for that. So, which is, I got mixed feelings about. I got mixed, I got mixed feelings about. But anyhow, so, so this was the scenario we had. I had a scenario where I had, um, it was an organization and they do a lot of acquisitions. They acquire other organizations. So every time they had a project, a project was a new acquisition. They're acquiring a new, a new, a new company, a new organization. Okay. So that the internal group needed access to all of the channels, channels one, two, and three, boom, boom, boom. And they needed to do high, they needed collaboration in a high velocity way. So teams is the obvious choice. Okay, because they can have chat, they can have calendars, the meetings and tabs and files and bots and apps and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 it's awesome. What teams? Let's give it to me. They go, but Ryan, I have a certain set of folders that are inside there that need to go shared externally with the people we're actually purchasing their business from. So they can put in their, their leases, put in their payroll, put in their, we can capture all this stuff. And I go, well, you don't like email? They're like, huh, funny, <laughs> right? No, they don't want email. They want to be able to put their documents in there, have a landing place for them to put all their content in. I go, what have you been doing up to this part? They go, we've been using Dropbox. I'm like, oh, how does that work enough for you? Not really good. I'm like, okay, because now we have stuff in Dropbox. We got stuff over here. Can we just have a unified Microsoft kind of audited solution? Sounds like a good idea to me, okay? IT put you up for that, didn't they? No, 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 no. So what I really want to do is I want to really share out, have folder A, okay, or folder B, one of these two folders, have that accessible by, to Jack and Jack only, okay? But the problem is, okay, well, well let's look at it. The problem is, is that if I make Jack a member of this team, what does he have access to? Some or all? It's, not, it's all, okay? That's the issue we're really dealing with. So then we came up with this little trial and kind of architecture. When you have a share, when you have a team, we just saw in the last example, a team that has an echoing SharePoint site that if you put a document here, it's actually storing it in SharePoint behind the scenes. Every channel is actually a folder and you can create subfolders and vice versa. You guys follow me? So here, here's what we decided to do is that what we decided we wanted to do is say, hey, how about we just go into SharePoint and share just that one folder with Jack? He doesn't need access to the team side of things, which is like our internal, internal kind of like house kind of party, internal communications, the, all that dialogue. But we do have content that he can have access to that our folks can put content in and kind of share with him. So what do you think about that? They said, it's great. Can it work? Sure can. Let's go see it in action. All right. Do, do, do. And nope, you're not, I'm not sharing, am I? Let's do, I'm close. There it is. Okay, great. I have this, a team here called Acquire Acme. That's the project. We're acquiring the Acme organization. Looney Tunes, you know them. Dynamite and everything. It's awesome gifts for your cousins and nieces and nephews. <laughs> Don't give it to your own children. Okay, so I got a series of folders here of channels. Finance, payroll, property, looks awesome. And if I go into the files area, it shows me subfolders because you can organize your documents inside folders here, okay? Now, one thing I could do, I could go here, and like I mentioned before, I can go to manage team and I could add Jack in as a member, but he gets access to everything. It's too much, too much, too much. He sees all, open it, you're opening it up, you're seeing the Komodo, they're seeing all the goods, but I don't want that, okay? So what, Ryan, well, could we do, If you notice in here inside of Teams, could I use this get link thing? Sure, if I use the get link, okay, this is a different browser. I'm logged in as Ryan from a different domain. Okay, if you give it a shared link, this is not gonna work either. It'll open up and say, it just won't show me it. <laughs> And in some cases, it'll even say uh, access denied. 
I think it's eventually gives me the access time. <laughs> it doesn't exist or no longer work. You don't have access to that dude. No good for you. So yeah, I, you can't use the get link. I thought that would be a really safe thing. You're in teams, you want to share with somebody externally, you just grab the link and chuck it over to them and maybe it'll work. Er, that doesn't work either. So we had to go actually right to the, to the direct source. So let's switch back over. Change identities and I got to go, let's open this guy up in SharePoint. Now, when you get to SharePoint, there's a couple of different ways you can share stuff, okay? So one of the cool things you can do inside SharePoint is you can do this, they got this kind of new sharing tool. But if you go up to the gear here, you go up to site permissions. I know this is a little educational. You guys, you gonna hang with me with little tips? This is the stuff that'll make you hit on parties, I promise. <laughs> it's like my best joke. <laughs> Okay, so it's got the share feature, and if you go, I want to invite somebody, maybe you could invite somebody and check this out. Well, maybe I can just share the whole site with that guy, with Jack, my external user. But even in the fine line, fine reading thing, yeah, you got to read, I know. Users, don't count on users to do this, right? So it says, if you add users here, they will be given access to the site and not the group resources such as calendars and conversations, but it'll be all of the files. That's a different scenario. That's a different scenario if you ask me. If you're using kind of like an internal scenario, you want to use Teams for like your sales department, okay? And they do all their chat and conversations and calendars and meetings, all that stuff. But that, but you want the documents to be shared with the rest of the organization. This is where you go. Does that make sense? So it's a little broader. This is more specific. Specific. We found out, hey, that this tool right here, not going to work. Okay. We could also invite them to actually groups, but. Now you're just dealing with the whole share, old SharePoint permissions model, and that's just really hard to deal with. So check this out. So we are able to, in documents, go, and you guys kind of saw this in the end, I can go into like property, I can go to leases, I can take a whole folder, and I can use the classic share feature. Okay, in here, depending on what your tenant has been configured with, I can say, let's tenant, uh, this tenant is allowed to where SharePoint can be shared externally to specific people, I got to type. That's me. I'm going to send him an email. Awesome. So it now sends me an email just to the leases folder, and that's all I should have access to. Now, for a quick, and I don't want to wait for the email, I'll say copy link here. And if I switch over to my other identity, let's see if we can get that to show up. Remember, in this location, there was leases and property. What I don't want to see, I don't want to see properties. I want to see leases only. Oh, come on. Well, let's go back. Leases, copy. What's that? Did I, when I shared it, did I do it wrong? Oh, when I did a copy link, thank you. Yep, I need to do it. Oh. Mm. I just need to grab the address. There we go. Let's just grab the address. Let's not do the share. Here we go. Awesome. So now I have access through a different user account, an external user. But if I go back to property, all I see is leases. The other folders are missing. Even if I go back to documents, it doesn't give me access to anything at that, at that level. And if I were to keep going, let's say I'm really technical and smart. I want to see what's going on in this site. Okay, I start hacking the address here. Boom, I want to get to the homepage. It wasn't giving me access. It gave me access only to that particular folder. And it's a win. It's a win, it's a win, it's a win. So I think for this use case, we really found that Teams is awesome. It's got all these great features. It's a, uh, but, Reality is sometimes you have unique permissions. You have a mixed environment, which you really need to work with. And so we found that, hey, you had to, we had to think through it a little bit differently and look at, hey, use Teams for internal, and then on the SharePoint side, take folders and then share them out directly within the external users, and they gave them the access they wanted. Awesome. How are you guys doing? You good with me on that? Cool. Let's keep moving on. Yeah, sometimes it's too much, sometimes just not enough. Okay, 
All right, so my last case study I'll talk to you guys about is this idea of site sprawl, okay? And, and Chris did a really good job of kind of teeing this up, this idea of um, when you release teams to people, do you allow them to self-service? means they create teams as they want. Who's, who, who does that? Cool. Who, 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 who does that but is not against it? <laughs> okay, so the team sprawl idea, my first thought, my first opinion of it is totally, I'm totally fine with it. Let it go. Just let it, just let it, just let it go. Okay, and I know I'm talking to IT people and you guys all like, dude, you've betrayed me. <laughs> what are you saying? Okay, now here's, here's, my, here's my motivation, okay? And I'll, let me talk through that and then I'll talk through why this is why I had to do, why we had to do this. Because if you don't have the, the unique scenario, then you should allow team sprawl, okay? Here it is. All right, do you guys have to manage the infrastructure that these sites have to go into? No, you do not. No, it's in Azure. It's in the cloud. Once upon a time, we used to put these, these site collections into our own servers, into our own SQL databases. And there was a what we called a physical architecture you had to follow. Otherwise, SharePoint would stop performing. Okay, every database had a 200 gig per performance limit and it had a threshold. It was a best practice to have lar a single site collection per content database which means you then, if you had 10 site collections that were gonna be very big, you'd put them into your own SQL server database and have this thing scaled out. You guys follow me? Unless you had restrictions on the amount of size of the site collection, which you limited to, let's say, 30 gig per collaboration site, right? That were self-provisioned and you allow them to go into one database that you can manage over time with a life cycle. This is, I'm, this is your life, right? This is, we lived with this. And we had, we spent so much energy and we were so concerned about too many sites because it would fill up the physical storage that was supporting it underneath it. Guess what? It's not my problem anymore. But I still have that like pain of fear. Does that make sense? And my reaction is to control it, right? Because we got the call in IT that says, why is my site, the executive calls you, says, why is this site so slow? And then you're like, oh my gosh, we forgot to do, we didn't do this architecture type of thing. We should put this architecture in. It was always a secondary thought, right? And we got burned by it. So now we have, we have pain and burn and it still stings and that's a little more, a little too psychology, psychological, but, but that's the idea. So step number one, I'd say site sprawl, I'm okay if that's your reason. Make sure you check yourself, make sure that's not the reason. Number two. Okay, what is the likelihood that a user is gonna go discover looking for a team to go join and be a part of? Who is gonna walk down the street, knocking on doors, looking for parties to attend? Okay, I, I, just, I just don't see that happening. Okay, and it's kind of funny because if you put it in that context, if, you're, if you do that, your manager might say this. He goes, oh, you don't have enough to do? You need to be part of another team? Oh, Saturdays are designed for people like you, okay? Come on into the office. Nobody, nobody goes out to teams and says, man, I just want to, where else can I get engaged, right? It's not going to happen, okay? So you're not going to keep on knocking until you find a party you like. Because teams is not social. These are not optional. And for, for most of the organizations we work with, we usually try to make that distinction between Teams and Yammer. Yammer is optional. Like you can ignore, you can ignore any content in Yammer, and that, that's kind of your rule. You put anything in Yammer that you can be ignored, that would normally be informational. Hey, by the way, today's Walking Wednesday. Come join us out in the parking lot. We're gonna make three laps. Those kinds of things, right? That, I don't, that is not gonna impact my performance, right? You put all that stuff there, but Teams is not optional. This is where you get stuff done. You cannot ignore instant message pings. This is where your documents are stored. This is the stuff. When you put in those contexts, you're like, yeah. So if, if that makes sense to you, number two defense is another, another reason why you can allow team sprawl. Okay. So, but here is the scenario. Okay. Well, let me go back. The scenario is this. 
is that they really wanted, I worked with this client and two, two clients I'll mention is they really wanted to make it so that they knew they're going to have a large amount of teams and they didn't want imposters. They wanted that this team is really the HR team. They want, and they knew that they're going to have lots of teams listed in their team's interface. Okay. And then when they look at them, they wanted to say, this is the one for HR. Here are my, here's the ones for my departments I'm a part of. Here's my projects I'm a part of. Here's my cross-functional teams. They wanted some kind of way to identify them. And it really wasn't that big of a discovery concept. It was just a matter of like kind of a naming convention, right? Can we put a naming convention at least? So when we look at all these, we can find these things. The answer is yeah, we sure can, sure can. Okay. So here's, here's kind of what we came up with them. Naming conventions could be a couple different ways, okay? And if you're not familiar with the, how naming conventions work in Microsoft Teams, is that when you go to provision a team with its name, you, you type in this part. And then we can put a prefix in front of it, and then we can fill in an attribute from the user's profile. Fill in an attribute from the user's profile, like what department they're from. Is that cool? That's kind of cool. So let's say Jim is the department, is a part of retail. He creates a, creates a, a team called Springline 20. And so it's a project, it's P Springline 20 dash retail would actually be the name. And so the way they got this thing set up, so it looks like this for their naming convention, that if they have a team that represents a, an official part of their department, it had the initial the prefix of D, if it's a project, it's a P cross-functional C, if it's a general, it was a G. You guys follow me? Okay, now out of the box, we weren't able to make this happen, okay? So we purchased a product for them called Valo Teamwork 2.0. You heard Chris Stevenson mention it from Masco. And what, team, what Teamwork does for you, we, you turn off the self-service and you drive people to the site. That, I just don't like it in itself, okay? But you're at least corralling the cattle, right? One direction. They go out to this form, they fill out a form, they say, what is this? Is this a project? Is this a department? Is it a cross-functional? Is it a general? They have to pick one of those, okay? They fill in the name. They fill in some numbers, they hit save. It just built and then it runs code behind the scenes and it provisions the team automatically for them. But we are at, well, at that point, we've now captured it. Kind of now have a catalog of all the different project teams, all the ones that represent functional departments, ones that are cross-functional, and we can also apply life cycles to them. So if it's a general team, we, we ping them every 18 months and says, hey, you still using this? 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 If they say yes, you just you get another 18 months. For departments, we don't ping them. They just stay out there forever, All right? Projects, they fill in a start date and an end date, part of their form of the fill out. So 60 days after the project end date that they filled in is over, we ask them, hey, you done with this? You done with this? You done with this? And, and when that may be, it gets deleted, maybe it means that it also just stays. But we have it, we kind of now have a disposition on it. We say it's now closed. These are the closed projects. And then whatever our records management policy is, the less says, which is like seven years, seven years after a project's been completed, you can dispose of the records. Now we know which ones those are, and we can dispose of them on with a different job routine seven years after they've been dis dispositioned. Is that cool? That's cool. But this is highly, how many guys are thinking about these problems? I'm curious, seriously. Awesome. That means you guys are way on the mature model, right? You, you've already thought about teams. You thought about storage. You thought about records retention. You know, you could probably name the person in the records department by name who holds that policy, right? That is a very mature, mature state of your organizations. A lot of organizations are like, what? We get rid of stuff? No. You mean I have to get rid of the things I print out on a regular basis? Yeah, probably should do that too. So that was the naming convention we work with. So here's kind of the, the example. HR, it looked like this. Projects looked like that. And we had a cross-function one for SummerSlam. Okay, awesome. All right, so I, I got two minutes here. I'd love to open it up for Q&A for you guys. Does anybody have any questions? In your classic team site? then you can you can display them as a tab. The question was, what if you have multiple, in a classic team site, what if you have multiple document libraries and you want to present them inside Teams? So you can either migrate them into channels. That's, I would call that solution awesome A. That's A plus solution. Solution B would be to display that content as a tab inside Microsoft Teams. So people can get to it through the Teams environment, 
but this is really and, it, and it, they can work with the documents right there, but it's not as a um, it's not as a, a plus experience. Yep. Anybody else questions? Yeah. Yeah, that's not my zone, but we implement teams even in our own organization. I haven't had a desk phone in five years. It just comes through. It came through Skype. Now it comes through teams. So um, I, I kind of love it. <laughs> so but we do have technicians on the red level side that do that architecture, the phone system, implementing it, and we have a call center. So like we do managed services so we can take like help desk stuff. So our help desk number and now gets all that stuff gets routed through teams and gets routed to folks answering phones on a service desk. It's pretty cool. <coughs> Talk about an infrastructure change. That's a massive infrastructure change. And we're kind of pitching that to the folks that are acquiring. They're acquiring um, the organization is acquiring veterinary clinics. So have all these little mom and pop veterinary clinics. You know, they have their own independent syst phone systems. They go, why don't you guys just offer a unified phone platform? <laughs> They go, awesome. I go, have you looked at Teams? Yeah, we've, we're looking at that and three others. So it's part of the part of the package. Good question. Anybody else? Um, you talked about basically taking SharePoint sites and migrating them. Mm -hmm. um, is, is your intent to have that be the same for all of their organizations who are trying to do that with all of their existing SharePoint sites? Or if not, what is the criteria for when you would advise to do that? Yeah, that's a great, the great answer there is depends. <laughs> yeah. you know? So it's a volume. For me, it's a volume thing. Like how many sites are we talking about? What would, do you have manpower to actually do that? So they're going to say, it's a lot, Ryan, and I don't. Then I would say, let them be and start new. Or that's the easiest, that's the easiest, that's the easiest thing for me as the consultant to say. And then you maybe, then you have people that cry wolf, like, no, oh, no. Then you just walk through the steps. Good, good question. Last question, anybody else? OK, cool. In summary, here's, here's your reminders. Classic team sites can become modern. Number two, mixed access can exist in Teams environment. Sprawl is not that big of a deal. It's just not. I'm not scared of it, OK? And naming conventions are old school cool. All right, if you guys want to contact me, I'm our, I am R. Charnock at Red Level Group. I'm also on Twitter posting about this stuff on a regular weekly basis, and I'm also on LinkedIn. I'd love to connect with you guys on LinkedIn. So thanks a lot. <laughs> Up next is my distinguished colleague, Clay Osborne. He's in charge of our development and app stuff. So he's going to share with you a whole bunch of awesome things about Power Apps, Flow, and 